Hello, this week we are back with more top tips for your training contract journey. In particular, in this video today, I'm going to be giving you some tips for interviews. I've done quite a few videos in the past about my interview experience, namely my most difficult interviews, how to do video interviews. So if you are interested in these kind of videos, click on the links in the description below and also the links above. This video, however, will be a little bit different because it will provide a bit more generalized advice for those of you who have got interviews in vacation schemes or assessment centers or final training contract interviews or even paralegal interviews as well. This video will be helpful for you as well. Before I start, let me introduce myself. I'm Simranjit Kaurman. I am a trainee solicitor for a UK top 20 firm. I'm currently in my first seat and I make videos for aspiring solicitors just like this one today but I also vlog my journey to becoming a solicitor and beyond. I also make videos about uh, personal development and all these other kind of random stuff on the side. Let's jump into the video. So firstly I want to talk about how I prepare for interviews. This is a big question that I'm asked quite often. Some of these methods of how I used to prepare may work for you, some of them may not. So definitely try them out and see whether they work. And if you do have any further suggestions, any further comments or any further ways that someone could prepare for an interview, drop them below in the comments and help your fellow mandem out. The first thing I'd like to share when preparing for interviews is mindset is everything. If you're preparing and looking at your notes thinking, oh, you know what, there's no point me doing this. I'm never gonna get through anyway. Why do they even select me for an interview? All those kind of thoughts they I think I used to have those thoughts and they used to really impact my preparation because I just kind of demotivated myself and didn't put as much effort in because I thought I wouldn't get through so what's the point in trying so that's the first thing I like to say really get yourself into the mindset of this is a great opportunity that's come my way I'm going to try my best. Next thing I would say is make sure you research the firm again. Don't only rely on the notes that you've made at past the application stage. Of course, there may be certain developments that the firm has done since then. Therefore, you need to make sure that you are on top of the recent developments that the firm has been involved in. As part of your research as well, for interviews, you should also perhaps try and find out who is interviewing you. If you can't find out, that's completely okay. Sometimes the firm actually provides this to you as well. So if you are informed about that individual or you find out on your own accord who they are, you can do a little LinkedIn stalk. Of course, make sure your account's on private mode though. And the reason why I say that is your interviewer may be in a certain practice area and they may have an interest in certain things. You may find out more about them and those are things that you can also talk about in your interview or it's things to look out for in an interview. So for example, say if you want to give a recent news story about an M&A deal, but the person who's interviewing you is an M&A partner, you wanna make sure that you know what you're talking about. The next thing I'd want you to research and try and find out is also the format of the interview. And by format, I'm referring to whether the interview will be scenario-based or competency-based or just a general interview or a technical interview. There's loads of different names that are chucked around for different types of interviews. And sometimes, again, this is specified to you in the invitation email or you have to find out for yourself, or they just don't tell you. For competency-based interviews, I really recommend watching Aiden's channel, and he has a specific video where, I think it's called How Do I Answer, or How To Answer Competency-Based Questions, and he goes over the different techniques that you can do. But what I would say for competencies, just really briefly, it's about showing the experience that shows that competency off best, and that all plays a part in your preparation for the interview. For scenario-based interviews, the first thing I'd say straight off the bat is make sure you look at the solicitor's code of conduct make sure you know what a solicitor can ethically do or morally do and what they can't do and what situations would cause a solicitor to be struck off a lot of questions i've been asked in scenario based interviews have been based on the solicitor's code of conduct and also for scenario based interviews i like to think of the flip side argument so not every time in a law firm is everything all rosy and fine you are going to meet colleagues that you know you don't get along with you are going to meet clients that are frustrating to work with you are going to be in situations where you make mistakes and that's where i think scenario based interviews really come in to try and test your reactions and what actions you take and how you'd feel so really try and when you are answering scenario based interviews one thing that i really did that helped me was link it to a time where i've done something similar to really prove that in the past, I've done something similar to this scenario that you've mentioned. 
and this is how I acted upon it and learned from the situation and that's what I would do again similarly in the situation scenario that you've provided to me so therefore it provides a bit of evidence for the interviewer and for general interviews honestly <laughs> this is going to be the worst advice I've ever given but revise everything revise the firm revise your competencies revise your application do some commercial awareness I mean to be fair for commercial awareness I would say prepare that for anything you've got whether it be an assessment center whether it be an interview don't ever slack on commercial awareness that's something for example that firms want to see you display sometimes on your own initiative so if you are commercially aware you can just sprinkle it in without them asking and it gives you extra brownie points basically so revise essentially everything you can and in terms of practicing how to answer questions looking and speaking in front of a mirror speaking in front of a camera on your phone those are all really really useful things that you can do because you then look out for your body language one thing that i have tried to be doing a lot more often recently is being more conscious of when i'm going um or ah uh, and instead i'm kind of forcing myself to just pause instead of saying um to fill the gaps so and that was something that i could only pick up on once i'd rewatched my youtube videos so re-watching yourself sometimes can be a little bit uncomfortable but it is something that really helped me in noticing the quirks in my language if you've watched my videos for example you will also know that i say like a lot and i say kind of a lot so it's kind of like this or it's kind of like that so those are little quirks that i've picked up on myself personally and i'm trying to instead fill them up with silence in terms of further preparation that you can do this leads on really nicely to mindful learning mindful learning have produced the ultimate commercial law assessment center study guide this 121 page booklet contains the contributions of around 200 lawyers trainee solicitors grad recruitment from all across the city it's designed to help applicants navigate the assessment center tasks and you know earlier how i was talking about competency-based questions this assessment center guide contains successful answers of 40 competency-based questions commercial awareness questions scenario based questions and a lot more and if you want to find out more about who contributed to the booklet itself it's from the likes of people from Alan and Overy, Slaughter and May, Bird and Bird, Clifford Chance, just to name a few, just a subtle flex. So it's definitely a must have for any aspiring solicitor who is looking to build on their performance at assessment centers. Now, bearing in mind this booklet has only been released last year, Mindful Learning have already helped hundreds of people gain vacation schemes, training contracts, and paralegal roles at their top choice firm. So the study guide has 10 chapters and let me give you a bit of detail about what these 10 chapters are about. How to prepare for your assessment centre, how to effectively research a firm, an assessment centre checklist. This next one's a little bit relevant to this video. Over 80 interview questions and an additional 35 exemplar responses to these questions, which have been written by trainee solicitors. And these questions cover competency questions, motivational questions, technical questions and scenario based questions. There's another chapter about how to approach case study interviews and this also includes two Sample case studies and two full analysis of financial statements. There are also chapters about how to approach presentations, how to approach group tasks, and 19 end of interview questions. Now, I think I've sold it to you guys. You know what to do. Check out the link in the video description below. And as a little special offer to all of you, there is an exclusive discount available. There's a 35 discount code available for you if you purchase this guide. Just enter the code SIMS35 at the checkout. All right, let's get back to the video. Now, what I really want to talk about is that journey to the interview. Now, for me, this involved commuting, taking the tube all the way to the office where I was going to. Now, on this journey, some people may want to not do anything at all, listen to music, listen to a podcast, that's completely okay. Some people want to work till the very last minute, that's also very okay. I did a bit of both when I was on my journey, so I used to keep a spare pen and paper with me and what I would do on the train is I'd get this pen and paper out and I would come quickly ask myself a question, Sim, why this firm? And I'd quickly jot down three to five bullet points and I'd just keep on surprising myself with little questions and just jot down the answer rather than me having to like mouth it on the train. Imagine if someone was just watching me on the train, I was just there like, okay, three reasons why I'm applying to the firm is this, this, this. I'll just look like a madman, you know, like I, I can't be looking like that. So that's why I used to bring the pen and paper to write it down instead. When you're in the interview itself, 
smile. It's great, it conveys confidence and also pause before giving your answer. This was a key piece of feedback that used to come back to me every single time. They used to say, Sim, you jump on answering the questions way too quickly. Now the problem with that is you sometimes only focus on one part of the question so you're so quick to want to answer, you only answer one part or you've not answered the question properly or you could have actually provided a better answer if you just gave yourself that time to just compose yourself and think. Now I'm not saying sit there for one minute for every single answer and just wait there. For me this involved, you know, maybe just five seconds to just be like and then you speak. And I think you just come across in a lot more controlled manner rather than just rushing. Now, a common question I'm asked is, what do I do if I don't know the answer to this question? Now, there are gonna be loads of people who give loads of different advice to this. And of course, the answer that I may give may be wrong. You know, I can't really apply the same advice to every single firm. So this is my advice if you are ever in that horrible situation where you don't know what the answer is. Firstly, try and see whether you can break that question down. Are there separate parts of that question? And then try and see whether you are able to answer a certain part of that question. Personally, I've always tried to answer a question in some way. If it's a topic that I don't have that much knowledge on, but I've read something or glanced at it br very briefly, I've always been in situations where I've been able to make something out of it and talk about it. So that's what I'd always say, try and think about the wider topic around the question, not simply the question itself. And then if you are still stuck and you still can't think of anything safe, it's a topic that you've heard nothing about. For example, I don't know, maple leaf trees. Like, uh, that was me literally just looking outside at a tree. I have no knowledge about that, but I could talk about other species of trees perhaps or photosynthesis. Now, if you are really, really stuck and you don't know, maybe just say, apologies, I do not know the answer to this question, but I can talk about a related topic in brackets instead that might show that albeit you know you're honest you don't know the question instead you are actually able to provide initiative and just be like look hold my hands up i don't know it but i can talk about this instead but honestly though not to get you worried i've never been in a situation where i do not know what the hell the interviewer is on about i've always managed to think of something to say so in my opinion, don't worry about that what if of, oh my God, what if I get asked something that I don't know? Because for me, that's actually never happened. I've always managed to think of something to say. Now, the next thing I want to say really, really briefly is try and speak in chunks. Now, this is something that I learned on advocacy because I realized I actually speak really, really fast. And I speak a lot faster when I'm nervous. So one thing that was recommended to me is to speak in chunks. This is an example. My name is Simranjit Kormon. I'm a trainee solicitor from a UK top 20 law firm. Do you see how that was a lot more calmer? It allowed you to think about what you wanted to say next. And it comes a lot more thoughtful and controlled as well. So you might wanna consider doing that if you're someone who speaks really fast in interviews. That's everything that I've got to say for this video. I really, really hope you've enjoyed it. Please like, comment, subscribe, and yeah, see you all in the next one.